live NFL trivia every Wednesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge for a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. October 6, 2013. It's week 6 of the NFL season, and the San Diego Chargers are traveling to Oakland to take on the Raiders. If you remember this game, in which the Raiders won 27-17, it's probably because of the incredibly bizarre circumstances that led to it. Because the Oakland Athletics were playing in Game 2 of the American League Division Series the night before, and the Raiders and the Athletics shared the same stadium, this meant that the stadium was going to have to get transformed and configured from baseball to football in incredibly fast time. The deadline was so tight, in fact, that the NFL decided that it would be a good idea to move the Raiders game from its originally scheduled time of 425 Eastern to 11.35 Eastern, making it one of the latest starting games in NFL history. Everything worked out in the end, as the workers were able to transform the stadium overnight. Over on my NFL channel, I talked in depth about that game and that process, so if you want to learn more about that, click the card in the upper right corner. That transformation was seen as really tough, and that was going from a game ending late Saturday night to having the stadium ready for players to do walkthroughs and warm-ups and whatnot, by the end of the afternoon on Sunday. In total, the transformation took a whopping 18 hours to complete, with work being done all throughout the night. But now, I want you to imagine that the Raiders game was taking place not at 8.30 Pacific Time, but instead was taking place at 6.30. And I also want you to imagine that the Athletics game was taking place not late Saturday night, but Sunday afternoon meaning that you would have two teams playing two completely different sports on the same day, with about three hours, if all goes according to plan, to change the field from one sport to the other. You've got to do that transformation in record time, as the gates to the stadium open up for the football game two hours before. Seems absolutely insane, right? Seems like something that can't possibly be pulled off in a million years. Well, in 1988, that's exactly what happened with another team in California. Because in 1988, the San Diego Padres and the San Diego State Aztecs, with both teams sharing Jack Murphy Stadium, played a game on the same day under the strangest of conditions. And this is the story behind the absolute chaos. Before I talk about the San Diego State game in question, we need some context to understand the situation involving Jack Murphy Stadium and why the Aztecs were playing on the same day as the Padres in the first place. And to do this, we need to talk about how Jack Murphy Stadium worked. Today, the Aztecs have their brand new stadium, as Snapdragon Stadium just opened up this year, where the Aztecs are the primary tenant. But before playing their games there, back in 1988, they were playing their games at Jack Murphy Stadium, along with the San Diego Chargers of the National Football League and the San Diego Padres of Major League Baseball. Usually, this wasn't a problem, as the three teams could share the stadium without a ton of conflict, except for having the infield dirt for baseball on there for the first half of the season. However, if a conflict ever arose, where two teams would have to play on the same day for whatever reason, it was very clear and very apparent that the Aztecs were the team that was last in the pecking order. In many ways, it made sense why San Diego State was last in priority, as they were clearly the least popular team in the city, when compared to the Chargers and the Padres. And when the MLB schedule came out for the 1988 season, there was a major problem that needed to be addressed. Because on Saturday, September 10th, on the same day that the Aztecs were set to play their first home game and their first game in conference play, taking on Air Force, it was revealed that the Padres also had a game plan for that day. That night, the Padres would be taking on the Atlanta Braves. And because the Padres had priority to use the stadium, it meant that the Aztecs would have to move their game against Air Force to a different date. No longer could they open the season on a Saturday night. Now, you'd think that the easy solution would be to move the game to a different day where the Padres aren't playing, right? However, that was out of the picture, because the Padres were in town for eight straight days. On September 7th, they started a two-game series against the Cincinnati Reds. On September 9th, they started that three-game series against the Atlanta Braves. And on September 12th, they started a three-game series against the San Francisco Giants. In other words, to just move the game to a day 
where the Padres weren't playing, was not possible. But what about moving the game to a different week? Have the Aztecs and the Falcons take a bye that week, and just play some other time later in the season? Well, that also wasn't possible. For one, it would have been a major inconvenience to the Aztecs. They had a bye scheduled for the week of September 24th, so to have a stretch where you play against UCLA, then take a bye, then play against Stanford, then take another bye, and you're going on and off, would just not work. But more importantly, neither the Aztecs nor the Falcons shared any off weeks. The first available week that you could play the game was the week of December 3rd, as even though there weren't a lot of games, there were some games that took place that week, like Army-Navy, Hawaii-Oregon, and Miami-BYU, just to name a few. But none of those games were conference games, and there's a reason for that. Because this game between San Diego State and Air Force was a conference game, meaning that it impacted who represented the conference in the Holiday Bowl, you couldn't do this, as the bowls would never allow for a conference game to be played in December, since you might not have a definitive team playing in the game, and bowls need time to sell tickets and to market. This meant that San Diego State was in a massive pickle. There were no free dates where they could play the game, because the Padres had priority on the stadium, and they couldn't move the game to later in the season. And because this was a conference game, they had to play it. It's not like they could just get out of it or push it back a year. However, on Sunday, September 11th, the Padres and the Braves played in the afternoon, playing at 12 o'clock. Theoretically, you could have San Diego State play that night and have them play at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock. It's not a lot of time for a changeover, but it's doable. Heck, San Diego State did this in 1984, when there was a conflict, as the Padres played in the afternoon, and they played Stanford at home at 8 o'clock that night. So that's what the Aztecs settled on, even though it was incredibly weird for a college football game to be on a Sunday night during NFL season. For this game against Air Force, they'd play it at 8 o'clock. It's not a lot of time, but it's doable. In 1984 when they did this, the transformation took 3 hours and 20 minutes to complete. Baseball game ends at 3 o'clock, the transformation takes 3 hours and 20 minutes to complete, and you've got the teams out there for warm-ups, as though nothing had happened. So this should be a non-story, right? Well, that's when a little four-letter company named ESPN came calling. The good news was that they wanted to televise this game. They needed some Sunday night programming, since they had nothing else on. Remember that even though they held the rights to Sunday Night Football for the NFL, that didn't start until the second half of the season. And San Diego State was happy to accept the offer. You would be stupid to turn down ESPN and not take the money and the free publicity, since not only are you on national TV, but you're the only football game in town. Every time San Diego State had the opportunity to be on TV under athletic director Fred Miller, they accepted the offer for obvious reasons. The bad news? ESPN was only going to televise the game under one condition. The game had to start at 6.30. The later you start the game, the later the game goes, which means worse ratings on the East Coast, especially on a Sunday night where most people have to get up for work the next day. Because of this, the game had to start at 6.30 Pacific Time, not 8 o'clock. In other words, for all my Disney fans out there, it was the real-life version of this scene from Muppet Vision 3D. Sam, are you about ready? Yes, it's a glorious three-hour finale. You got a minute and a half. <gasps> That's right. They somehow had to convert Jack Murphy Stadium from baseball to football, which was already a tough task as it was, in 90 fewer minutes than they initially allotted for. The average Padres game took three hours to complete back then. With the Padres game starting at 12.05, you figure that the game will be over by 3.05 in the most realistic scenario and according to stadium manager Bill Wilson, he can do the conversion in about three and a half hours. Well, do the math. In that scenario, the conversion isn't done until 6.35, which is five minutes after the game is now scheduled to kick off. In other words, this already almost impossible task just became even more impossible. Wilson said, I've guaranteed that we'll get it done at least three and a half hours after the end of the baseball game. The 6.30 time is pushing it. I've told ESPN to have synchronized swimming highlights or something, just in case. This conversion was not all that simple, as it entailed a lot of different things. As part of the conversion, 
the pitching mounds had to be leveled. The entire left field wall had to be removed. The foul poles had to be removed. The entire field had to be lined and marked up. The stands on the third baseline had to be pushed back. The goalposts had to be installed, and the stadium had to be cleaned up. Now you might be saying that this isn't a huge deal, and that you can always fix the problem by just hiring more people. Except you couldn't do that. You couldn't add more than 31 people working on the field and the 50 people in the stands, because it would get too chaotic and efficiency would actually go down. As Wilson said, we can't use any more people because they would just get in each other's way. So they had to deal with the staff that they got. And remember, this is baseball to football that we're talking about. If this was football to baseball, this might not be as big of a deal. Because there was no overtime back then, and because football is played in any kind of weather, the games didn't go more than three hours. You had a good idea of when the game was ending. But with baseball, you're dealing with an untimed sport that could feature extra innings or rain delays. Heck, when the Padres and Braves met earlier in the season down in Atlanta, there was one game that was played that took 4 hours and 23 minutes to complete, which is absolutely disastrous for something like this. Sunday, September 11th, 1988, was set to be the most pressure-filled day in the history of the stadium, and maybe in the history of any stadium transformation crew ever. However, the good news for everyone involved was that, somehow, against all odds, the Padres and the Braves played an obscenely quick game. Because that day, as the Padres beat the Braves by a final score of 8-2, the game only took 2 hours and 8 minutes to complete, meaning that the game was over by 2.13. Can you imagine a 9-inning baseball game being completed in just over 2 hours? Almost seems hard to believe nowadays, because that wasn't even the norm back in 1988. But that was the dream scenario, because now, the crew had more than four hours before kickoff was set for the San Diego State football game to change the stadium and get it ready. Wilson knew he could get it done in three and a half hours, so the fact that he now had over four hours was a gift sent from the heavens, and it just became business as usual. The Aztecs game went off without a hitch and started on time. And in a great day for San Diego sports fans who wanted to try this doubleheader of sorts out, the Aztecs prevailed, winning it by a final score of 39 to 36. Somehow, the miracle of all miracles had been pulled off. Two games starting within six and a half hours of each other in two completely different sports, and from all accounts, it was executed flawlessly. Today, San Diego State will never have to deal with anything like this. They are the primary tenants at Snapdragon Stadium, and they own the priority in every circumstance. But back in 1988, it led to an absolutely chaotic scenario that is still remembered three and a half decades later. At the start of the day, no one knew if the Aztecs were even capable of playing the game. By the end of the night, they, along with their co-tenants in the Padres, were victorious. The Oakland Coliseum got about 24 hours to change their stadium from baseball to football back in 2013. Jack Murphy Stadium was slated to get one-eighth of that time. And they got it done with the snap, or should I say, the snapdragon of their finger. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com, and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping get the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.